What's up, YouTube? Welcome back. We are going to be diving back into the uh, trade video right here. What is it worth? Um, what is the value of my items? I want to make sure that you guys uh, know all of this stuff because you guys ask so much about it. And it's just <laughs> helpful. YouTube, you know. The, the, that's the new streaming service. I leaked it accidentally. Um, I want to make sure you guys have the right values and everything going forward and the right idea of what to keep. So in the last video, we talked about runes and what a high rune value kind of roughly is and where the runes kind of relate to each other. We talked about um, jewels. We talked about charms and um, really kind of focused on all those varieties there. Now I want to get into the uniques and kind of blitz through the uniques because this is going to be a little bit easier since you have more standardized stuff here instead of like, is my 35 ED 15 IS jewel worth something? Like, yeah, it is. Okay, is the 15 IS by itself worth something? Eh, probably not. You know, like hard, hard to really gauge with all of that. So getting into um, these items will be a lot easier. And once again, I am going to be on the old Legacy Diablo 2. And this is because I have all the items already over here. And... Pluggy allows me to see them all rather than if I go to the new, uh, you know, D2 Resurrected and have that statue, it'll just be a little bit more difficult. So we'll start out with some jewelry right here. What to actually keep and has value? Nokazin doesn't have value. Rising Sun, maybe like Lem de Pole, not a ton of value, but somebody might want it. Some fire source or something could use it or somebody who just wants to get some fire absorb. Mahim Oak doesn't have value. Crescent Moon doesn't really have value. Once again, you can maybe trade it for like a foul or something like that. Somebody wants big mana steel might want it, but whatever. High Lords has value. This is going to be a, a best in slot amulet for a lot of the characters. A lot of melee characters love it. Um, so this could be worth Istrune. This could be worth High Rune, Goal Rune, somewhere in there. I'm not exactly sure what the value is right now, um, but definitely something that you want to check out. Um, I have Etlich doesn't really have value. Once again, you might be able to trade this to somebody um, early on who is, you know, plus one skills. Maybe get like a Lem or a Co for it. Not much beyond that. Metal Grid doesn't really have a lot of value. Um, it's okay. Somebody might trade for it. If they do, you might be able to get like a pole or something around there would be my guess. Somebody might be saying, oh no, Metal Grid does have more value. Um, and so, you know, check it out, but generally it's not a super sought after amulet, very high level requirements, and a lot of people are just going to replace with, you know, something else, uh, for, for it, right? Mara's or High Lord's kind of goes in the place generally of a lot of the times, but Metal Grid could still be worth a little bit. Seraph's, not a lot of value, um, but again, if it's, if it's, uh, you know, got the plus two skills here, uh, I mean, it's still nice. You can probably get like pull to, um, maybe something like that, uh, in there for it would be my guess just for the plus two skills. It'll lose value over time as more Mars get on the market. Atmas doesn't really have a lot of value. Um, some people might use it for the amp damage bonus attack rating, but once again, uh, High Lords is really going to be kind of the standard that people are using for, for that sort of character. So generally, you're not going to see a lot of value from an Atmos there. Um, and then Serikin's Chance doesn't really have value. Again, these could be worth Lem Rune, Pol Rune, right? A lot of items you'll find are worth Lem or Pol. Um, uh, you know, Um, Lem, Pol, Co, whatever in that range because it's not worth a ton but it's something that you can work around, trade a little bit with, and, you know, it's still, like, better than an L rune or something, you know? So there's still uh, something. And then Mara's has a lot of value, and, of course, it ranges from 20 all res to 30 all res. Uh, so Mara's is going to go for probably high rune plus at all points uh, would be my assumption. A perfect Mara's obviously worth more. A 20 Mara's obviously worth a little less. But any Mara should still be worth a lot, as this is going to be best in slot for a large portion of characters. Now moving into rings, Nagel rings, um, not really a lot of value. Early on, they'll have a little more because the magic find. And if you do get a 30% MF Nagel ring, that could be worth a little bit. Maybe once again, pull um, something around there. Uh, and then it'll drop, obviously, the lower the MF goes on it. So not super 
crazy, but they're still okay. They're still nice. Manolds, no value. Ravenfrost has value, and if you can get a perfect Ravenfrost at 250-20, it's worth even more. Um, if you're just rocking, you know, like these low ones or uh, anti-perfect or whatever. Not a lot. Um, these, again, you know, if you get like a perfect one or a near-perfect one, that's going to go for a little bit more. Once again, I'd guess in like Mal, Ist, whatever, a perfect might go in the high rune range. Um, but if you're just down in like a whatever, 175, 15, things like that. It's not going to be worth a ton. Maybe like a Paul Rune or an Um Rune or something along those lines. Dwarf Stars, not really worth a lot. Anybody can get a Dwarf Star. You might be able to trade it for a Lem or something. Um, but it won't have a ton of value there. SOJ is going to have a lot of value. These are worth probably around like Vex. Um, and so that's going to be uh, good right there. This is the most valuable ring. Um, so Vex or Azad or whatever it is. Almost about a high rune value for these. Or not quite a high rune, but half plus. Um, Nature's Peace doesn't have value. It's useful for Nilithak, um, and that's pretty much about it. Bull Cathos um, is going to have value. This is worth less than an SOJ, uh, maybe like half the price of an SOJ, I would say. So, you know, you might be able to get like Ist Goal somewhere around there for it. Carrion Wind. Doesn't have value. Um, and I guess I can put that up there. And then Wisp does have value. And especially if you can get a 20 20 or 20% 20 lightning absorb, these can have a lot of value as these can be um, really, really solid right here. So you get those lightning absorb people like Wisp. They're not worth quite as much as like an SOJ or something, but you can still trade a Wisp uh, probably for like. Uh, it's hard to say exactly. Maybe like Istrune, somewhere around there would be my guess. Maybe a little less, maybe a little more. Hard to gauge exactly. It depends on the stats. Um, but those are going to be your rings. Uh, jumping into perfect gems. Uh, 40 perfect gems. I, I think generally traded for like pull to um. That's a pretty standard like trade right there. And that's because people want to craft with the gems, so they'll trade you a Polar Umrun and you get the uh, gems and then can use that and it would be good, right? Um, so that's uh, the standard trade right there. But if you've got like five perfect gems, don't go try and trade that for like Polar Um. You could trade that for like Am or Soul or Shale or something along those lines. Um, but don't try and trade that for like high runes. That's kind of like an insulting offer. And nobody cares for you to sprinkle in like three perfect gems with your trade or something generally, right? Like it just doesn't do a lot. Um, also, perfect amethyst, perfect skulls, and perfect rubies are going to be worth a little bit more probably as they are going to be crafting. Um, so that's going to be kind of the crafting piece. Now, are p perfect gems, is, is that trade going to be a little bit different in its pricing? Maybe. Maybe it's worth uh, a little bit more or a little bit less. Um, so once again, look around and see what people are trading for like 40 perfect gems. Um, and see if it's like, oh, maybe you're getting Ist or Mal right now or something, right? You can, you can just check and see the values. Because once again, that's the biggest thing and the easiest way. If you do run into questions like that, just browse the trades look through and just watch the games as they make and see what trades are coming up often to kind of get a gauge of value. Um, but yes, the rubies and amethyst are going to be worth like twice as much because people like those for crafting the most. Um, in terms of bases, any white monarch that's just white or four open socket is going to have value. People love these because these are going to be making your spirits and your four open socket rune words. Um, so people will want these. These are going to be used by a lot of characters. Uh, in terms of uh, for like paladin shields, people really want the 45 all res shields. Um, if you can get a 45 all res ethereal vortex shield, that's very specific to a smiter uh, who wants an F exile. Um, and otherwise, this is really going to be like just aim for this white or four open sockets. Um, and yeah. And the reason people want monarchs is because this is the lowest strength shield that can get four open sockets. Okay. So a lot of people think, like, what if I got a kite shield? Maximum it can get us three open sockets. So the lowest strength required shield that's not a paladin shield is a monarch, which is why everybody wants monarchs. Other bases people want flails. 
crystal swords, um, and people want these, and phase blades. People want these to be five open sockets, six open sockets, four open sockets, depending their needs. Um, because you have spirits, you have, uh, you know, crescent moons, you've got griefs, you've got last wish, you have um, CTAs, hodos, uh, right, all of these things, and even just like six isted phase blade for an offhand for a berserk barbarian or something, right? Um, so all of these are going to be desired, and these bases and these monarchs and these things are generally going to go into like pole um, sort of range, right? Any base like that is generally going to be there. If you get a really nice base, uh, like it's, you know, a 15 ED uh, phase blade or whatever, then people will pay a little bit more. You can ask like Ist Plus probably or Hiren for that or something like that. Um, so it just really depends a little bit on that. Um, people also love Berserker Axes. So once again, getting those four, five, six, getting your ethereal ones, like this will be perfect for an Eth Breath of the Dying right here. If this had 15 ED on it, it'd be worth even more, right? Um, and so, you know, all of these kind of have their uses looking just for right there, right? A Berserker Axe with 14 ED on it, 14 ED to attack rating. These things people really like because they can make the griefs and they can make whatever items in these sorts of things. So you can just see with my collection of items here, what sorts of stuff really get desired. Getting into two-handed, you're looking for cryptic axes, and, and you're looking for a lot of two-handed ethereal. Colossus Vulges, Giant Thresher, that one rolled three open sockets. Um, there's a Thresher base, right? So these are kind of your like bases that you're going to have for this, and the reason you want them ethereal is because you want them for your mercenary. A lot of these are going to be going for probably around like... Uh, Mal to a high rune, depending how good the base is. Um, or, you know, maybe like a Vex or something like that. I've definitely seen like a four open socket ethereal thresher with ED go for a lot, you know, because that's like the perfect infinity base for somebody and stuff. Um, so just collecting these sorts of uh, elite bases that have um, their, you know, ethereal nature and have their uh, cryptic axe, whatever it is. These are great because then people can socket stuff and make, um, yeah. So he says, I traded an F four sockets thresher for a Vex today. And that seems perfectly fine with what it is, right? Like that's what I would believe that value to go for right there. And like I say, these are because people want to make infinities and want to make all their nice um, bases for their mercenary. And since it's ethereal, it's a little bit harder. Um, Eth Thresher Insight worth anything? Yeah, for sure. So in terms of the bases, that's what that can be worth. Um, and then same thing with like your ethereal armors. People want to get nice ethereal armors. So once again, you're looking for elite bases Dusk Shrouds, you're looking for, I mean, for a, a lot of um, those, you know, you want to look for, like, higher ones that are going to be, uh, you know, Archon Plates, people like Great Hauberks. They can have a little bit higher strength because mercenaries can, you know, wear stuff with a little bit higher strength. Sacred Armors can be a little bit too high of strength sometimes. So some people don't like to use the 222. That's kind of, like, a little too much for it. Um, but for the bases, you know, Getting a, getting a nice dust shroud, getting a lacquered plate, getting a great hauberk, whatever it is. And the higher the defense, the better it is. Uh, you know, a bone weave, whatever it is. Additionally, now that the eth bug is fixed, and I don't know if they're changing it, but as of this point in time when I'm making this, ethereal bugging no longer works. Um, getting a, an armor that is ethereal with enhanced uh, defense on it is actually going to be even better. Because before, you couldn't socket it, so you couldn't do uh, the bugging of it. If you don't know about that, go look that up. That's just how you would, like, get higher defense on armors, was e-bugging it. That can't happen anymore, so now getting an ethereal armor with um, enhance, with more def defense on it, enhanced defense is going to be better. And so you can, once again, trade these bases around, and you're trading pole, um, mal, is, right, whatever it is, depending on how good the base is, how high the defense is, and if it's socketed already and stuff. In terms of regular bases, Archon Plates, it's kind of the same thing, but generally lower strength. Archon Plates, Dusk Shrouds, Worm Hides, um, 
See, like, nobody's going to really want, like, a three open socket sacred armor, even though it's got, like, high defense and whatever. Nobody wants to wear 232 strength. Um, great. Hobbricks are decent. Mage plates are decent as well. Some people like to have a mage plate. And you're looking these for white. You're looking these for ED, enhanced defense, um, and like that. And you're looking for these things with four open sockets or three open sockets. Those are going to be uh, the desire. So, like, here's an, a mage plate armor. And you can see, why would somebody want to wear this? It has lower defense. Well, it also has 55 strength required. And so this is going to be very low strength. This is for people who want to put nothing into strength on their characters. Just have an enigma that is functional and they don't care one bit about the defense really at all. Um, as opposed to like an Archon Plate, which is 103 strength, which is still not a lot. I mean, you can still see these are not a lot right here. But this is what you're going to really be looking for for these things. And like I say, three or four open sockets for those. And then for your ethereal armors, you generally want to get four open sockets for fortitude, but even three open sockets for treachery and stuff can be nice. Um, so people are going to love those. And yes, there's no speed penalty on light armors. So people like armors that are light. You have light, medium, heavy. Go look up those. I'll put a post link below with like armor weights because they will have a little speed uh, deduction for you. Uh, and then... Um, that really covers bases that you want to aim for with that. I guess I can go into, uh, you know, maybe like eh, there's a Colossus Blade for, okay. Uh, in terms of bows, I guess plus three, um, four open socket Grand Matron bows are, are pretty desired. These can be used for faith, so a lot of people like to have these. Um, diamond bows can be used for a faith for a mercenary. Uh, if you want to run an Act 1 Mercenary, so people like these, and then they can get four open sockets and do that. Um, and then I've got the Stag Bow, probably, you know, whatever, using some low-level dual style or something. Um, but generally, you're going to be looking for Grand Matron Bows right here with plus three to bow and crossbow skills and four open sockets. That's going to be kind of your, like, desired base for the bows right there. Um, other bases, not really used that much. I guess... Uh, you could use a, a great bow for a faith as well for a mercenary if you want. Yeah, you could put like a harmony or something into this, right? Like, you know, there's there's definitely things you can do with like this sort of bow right here. It's a fun little like low level whatever. But will it have a ton of um, value beyond it? No. Um, and then like these bases right here are probably worth a decent amount, right? Like just because finding a four open socket grand matron bow with plus three to bow and crossbow skills is hard. And so you can definitely probably get a nice higher end for that or something I would imagine because somebody who really wants that faith is gonna want the really nice bow for it. Uh, perfect. Now let's go ahead and move into um, some uniques and armors. So starting out, uh, I don't think there's a single normal armor that's actually worth keeping and trading. Rattle Cage would be the only one, maybe, and maybe you get like, you know, a co rune or something for a Rattle Cage. Otherwise, nothing worth keeping in here. So, any of these, if you have one of these and you're trying to trade it off, it's probably not worth anything. Next, um, Viper Magi is worth trading. Spirit Shroud is maybe worth, like, again, Co Lem, somewhere in that regard. Q Hagen's maybe in that same regard, like a Lem rune. Scolders has value. People will want Scolders for the magic find as they uh, get get up. And then additionally, Ethereal Scolders will be worth more. This, you, you're probably getting into Pull Plus. Same with kind of Shaft Stop in that same range. Durial Shell maybe has that like Lem value early on. And uh, Guardian Angel maybe has a little bit of value at some point. Maybe once again, like a Pull or something. Magi's right now are going for like Malrune. They'll probably drop down to like Pull Rune or something. Um, right. Uh, Ormus is going to have some value if it has a good skill on it. So you're, once again, you're looking for lightning. You're looking for, you know, fireball or meteor. You're looking for blizzard. If it has warmth or anything like that, don't bother. Um, it's going to be worth nothing. And then additionally, you want it to have 15% and whatever it is, that'll help add to the value. Um, these can be a little harder to trade. It's not very often used, but... Some people will want them, and so this can be nice. Gladiator's Bane is not going to be worth a ton. If it's ethereal, it might have a little more value for a mercenary. Um, again, 
Maybe you're looking to get like pull um, something around there for it. Arcane's Valor. I don't really know anybody who super trades for it, but it's not a terrible armor. I imagine you can get a little something for it. And same for Leviathan. Both of these aren't going to be worth a ton, but they will have a tiny bit of value. Um, and then Steel Carapace and Templar's Might uh, don't have any real value right there. All right, one second. Hello? Perfect. All right. So. Perfect. Technician is coming. So anyways, <laughs> uh, there you can, there we can get to the, those. And here you can see, like I say, I've collected the, uh, the Ormuses right here. So not a big deal. Um, and you can just have those and, uh, you know, all right, a lot of them don't have value. This is teleport. This is chilling armor. This is telekinesis, right? These are all pretty worthless, um, even though they can be fine. And then Templars might, Anterials might, unfortunately, don't really have any value. Uh, I wish they did. Somebody might, like, use a Templars might. It's not the worst thing in the world. It's not amazing, though, and the strength is way too high. Um, but, like, Okay, regardless, you're probably not getting much value at all for them. Yeah, Templars and Tyrials, uh, unfortunately, are just pretty lame. Somebody might give you, like, an Um Rune or a Mal Rune or something for it because, uh, well, you know, why not? It looks kind of cool. So I, I, would, I would be like, hey, just for the rarity of it, I want to have at least, like, a Vex or a Gull. And if they don't want to give that to you, eh, you just keep it because it's solid, right? It's kind of like... It's a rare item. If you find that, congrats. Otherwise, you can see I keep Eth Gladiator's Bane, some Arcane Valors, some Guardian Angels, V Magis, Scolders, right? That sort of stuff. Moving into Helmets. Uh, Tarnhelm can have some value. Uh, very low value, but it does. it's like the very, very poor man Shaco, plus the skills and MF. So you can maybe get like a tiniest bit of value for that. Um, nothing else here is going to have any value. And that's like... Even then, like, you know, Korun or something. Um, Peasant Crown, again, in that, like, Co-Lem range. Rockstopper, Co-Lem range. Gaze is going to have a little bit of value. Pull to Um, probably, around there. Um, Valkwing is going to have a little bit of value. Maybe, like, Lem to Pull. Crown of Thieves might have a little bit of value again. And that, like, maybe, like, a Pull range for that. Um, Kira's, especially if it's 70 all res, can have a little bit of value. Once again, you can try and get pole, um, something in there. And then Jalal's and Ariat's will also be in that, like, pole, um, uh, maybe Mal, whatever sort of range. And again, if you get a perfect enhanced defense one, it'll be worth a little bit more because people really like those. They're not crazy uncommon, but they're going to be desired and people are going to want them. Um, and so they can be nice and, you know, you can get a little something for it. When you get into the unique helms, Shaco obviously has value. It will drop down in its value. Right now it's trading at like Vex or something, uh, maybe a goal. Uh, it'll drop down over time. And that's just because eventually everybody gets a Shaco and they're decently common drop. And so then it's like, all right, well, we all got it now. So they'll drop down probably, I would guess, be like pull um, Mal somewhere in there and um, whatever. COA is going to be worth a lot if you get the right rolls on it. So if you can get 15 damage reduction, 30 all reds. Let me actually go back to my front page. Um, so here's a 30 or a 29, 15 to open socket. So this is going to be worth multiple high runes um, because it's just going to be super, super nice. Uh, but it'll take a little bit to get somebody to uh, want it, desire it because it's a little more niche in, in its use cases and stuff. You'll find some paladin who wants that, probably. Um, giant Skull, not really a lot of value, uh, but you might be able to trade it for a little bit, right? Again, maybe pull to um range, something like that. You'll have to kind of check the market on it. Andy's Head is going to be nice. Um, this is a best-in-slot for mercenaries, especially if it's ethereal. So I feel like this will hold some more value. I would imagine it's going Mal-ist goal somewhere in there vex especially if it's ethereal you're getting into the higher ranges for it and again these values change but nice helm night wings especially with a higher percent cold damage is going to be super nice um so this is going to be something that you can focus on as well and it's going to be uh decently solid and value hard to say exactly but 
Um, definitely good. Veil of Steel, not really utilized at all. Um, so probably not worth uh, a ton. And then uh, Griffins is going to be worth a lot. Um, obviously, and if you get a 2015, this is where you get into the high runes. Steel Shade, not worth a lot. Halibird's not worth a lot. Wolf Howl, not worth a lot. Spirit Keeper, not worth a lot. Raven Lore, you might have a Fire uh, Druid who wants to do a little something with it, but, you know, not worth a ton. So, that covers Helms right there, and then, of course, like I say, if you can get some of those good ones, Ethereal, you kind of get into the good stuff. And I'm going to cut it right here for this video because I believe the internet guy is here and we uh, don't want him interrupting the rest of it. So I feel like that covered a good amount of those items. We'll continue with gloves and boots and shields and belts and all that stuff in the next video. Uh, GG, you guys. Thanks for watching. I hope that this is helping and you're getting some ideas. Mwah! Don't forget to like and subscribe. Peace, YouTube. All right. Internet guy is gonna be like right around here oh there he is he's knocking all right bye guys i'll catch you later